The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Alleluia. With tongues of fire, the Spirit kindles the apostles' zeal. They declare in new tongues the wonderful works of God. Blessed be God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. And blessed be God's reign now and forever. Alleluia, come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful people with your love. Alleluia. Grace and peace to you, and welcome to Christ United Methodist Church here in beautiful Farmer's Branch. I am Scott Holcomb McLean, and I welcome you to our online celebration service for Pentecost here in the week of May 23rd. Welcome to our service, and thank you for joining us. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's Miss Amy. I am so glad that you are here with me today for Children's Time. And today is Pentecost Sunday. It is a day that we remember and celebrate a very special event in the early days of the church. So let's look at the Bible lesson today and see what Pentecost is all about. When Jesus told his disciples that he was returning to heaven, he promised them that he would ask his father to send another helper to be with them. And that was a wonderful promise that Jesus gave his followers. But Peter, James, John, Andrew, and the rest of the disciples, they really weren't exactly sure what Jesus meant. Well, after Jesus ascended into heaven, the Bible tells us that his followers were gathered into one place. They were gathered to celebrate the festival called Pentecost when they gave an offering of their first fruits to God, and it was the first fruits of their harvest. Well, suddenly, all of the people at the festival heard a sound like a rushing wind, and next, they saw what appeared to be tongues of fire that came to rest upon the heads of each one of them. That would have been pretty amazing if that had been all that happened, but that wasn't it. The Bible tells us that after the wind and the fire, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other languages. Now, everyone could understand what was being said regardless of the language that they spoke. That is an amazing story about God sending his Holy Spirit, isn't it? Well, what is really amazing is that the Holy Spirit didn't come that one time and then go away. The Spirit still lives in the hearts of us and all of Christ's followers, and the Spirit is here with us today. The Holy Spirit guides us in the decisions that we make every day. I always feel like the Holy Spirit is like that nudge or that feeling inside of you that's pushing you in the right direction. He is the comforter who calms us in our fears and fills us with hope. The Holy Spirit speaks to us through the scriptures and helps us to understand what we read. The Holy Spirit is here to help us. So let's listen to him and do what he leads us to do. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for the Holy Spirit, which is our mentor and our guide and our little nudge that's inside of us always. We love you, God. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Friends, we take a moment to give thanks. Thanks to God and thanks to you for your support to Christ United Methodist Church, by the ways in which you help us to be the church, the movement of God's Spirit in this place. We give thanks for your gifts, and we thank you for the many ways in which you share your gifts. You may give to our congregation in a multitude of ways, online through our website at ChristForYou.org, or through your smart devices through our PushPay app. To get that app, you simply text the phrase, Christ for You to number 77977. You may also mail your gift to the church. Our mailing address is 2807 Valwood Parkway, 
here in Farmer's Branch. Also, as we're giving our thanks today, we know that we're coming quickly to June 13th. That is the Sunday. We return to our pre-COVID schedule of an 8.50 celebration worship, Sunday school at 10, and worship with Christ alive at 11. As we continue to phase toward that, I also wanted to remind you that we have Vacation Bible School the first weekend in June, and that first Sunday in June, June 6th, it is our hope to celebrate with one service outside that day. And we want to really support our children and our youth and all our volunteers who give so much to Vacation Bible School, and it's so great. We are thankful that we'll be back in person this year. So that means we have this Sunday, May 23rd, and May 30th as the remaining two services that will be pre-taped and available before worship. In June, no longer will we have pre-taped services, but we will have live stream services. And you may watch that live, and you may watch those recordings of the live services at any time. So thank you. And I share this prayer of thanksgiving. Living God, you graciously speak your word of hope in times of struggle and uncertainty, and you speak your hope in times of joy and peace. We are grateful that you are continually at work in our lives and in the world to fulfill your promises. May our giving today show our trust in you. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. As we worship at this time, one of the traditions of our church is to pray for people that have asked us to pray for them. Today you'll notice on the screen several names that are requests from us to pray. Also in your heart of hearts, you know people that you would like to pray for. Their names are not on the screen, but they're in your heart. Let's take a few moments of silent prayer, silent meditation, and uplift these people in prayer. Eternal God, on this Pentecost Sunday, Prepare our hearts to receive the renewing power of your Holy Spirit. Gracious God, fill us with the same spirit and inspiration you poured on the early believers and gave birth to your church. 
as a body of believers in Christ United Methodist Church, enable us to spread the good news of salvation. May we be a living witness of God's love. Place in each of us the desire to be the church you would have us to be in Farmer's Branch. Holy God, you are the God of wind, word, and fire. We praise you for sending the light and strength of your Holy Spirit. Regenerate the power of your word in our heart. May it be to us a sacred trust for the blessing of all humankind. That all nations may hear it in their own tongue and welcome it into their own life. Sanctify the universal church in every race and nation. The gift of your Holy Spirit may be extended throughout the whole world. As the body of Christ, may we be the people of God in Christ's United Methodist Church that is filled with your spirit. Live in your spirit and be in step with your spirit. May we find great joy in being the body of believers brought together for transformation and service. May our unity with each other be so tangible, our fellowship so genuine, our hearts so open, our friendship contagious, our spirit unmistakable, our joy overflowing, our love endless. Refresh us with your comfort, rule our heart in all your ways and lead us in the way everlasting. Lord, when life comes to its end and you bring us into the city of resurrection of your Son, shelter every nation and tongue with your Spirit and feed us all with joy unending through Christ our Lord. On this Pentecostal Sunday, may we join our hearts and souls together praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. My name is Darren Gardner. I'm your lay reader for this morning, Pentecost Sunday. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Loving God, may your Holy Spirit open our hearts and our minds to all of the ways that you speak to us, in words we understand, and in all ways that transcend language. Give us courage to speak your love everywhere we go, to everyone we meet. Amen. The first scripture is from Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it in patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what the mind of the Spirit, what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them heard speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to the Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents into the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And it, then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Imagine you're sitting in a grand cathedral, and it's Pentecost Sunday, and you're hearing read the wonderful words of Acts 2, the story of the beginning of the Christian church. You're hearing about tongues as of fire, and 
the Holy Spirit descending upon the disciples of Jesus to give birth to the church. And as you're hearing that story read, you notice the fluttering of wings. And you notice flying now in the nave of the church are white doves, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And you may wonder, how did the doves get in the church? And while you're trying to figure that out, you notice red dots falling from the ceiling, and you realize they are red rose petals. And they're floating down, and they're landing on you and on the other parishioners, and they begin to cover the space. You probably wouldn't experience that in a modern church. But a few hundred years ago, particularly in Europe, churches were built with a a special opening on the roof. They called it the Holy Ghost Hole. And it was built so that the church on Pentecost could drop into this church doves or rose petals. There was even a tradition that some churches would actually take straw and light it on fire and drop it into the hole, and it would float down under the church. I, I'm not sure uh, if that's true or not, but it sounds like something some preacher would think about, wouldn't it? But we have fire codes now, thank goodness. But the church went to great lengths to, to help the people to remember and to live in to the story of Acts. And for, for that building, that architecture, that Holy Ghost opening, was a reminder of the, of the coming of, of God's Spirit. And it was actually, one might even call it an invitation for the Holy Spirit to come upon God's people. It was an opening, an opening in the church, an opening in their lives for that movement of God's Spirit. We don't have very many of, of those openings in churches, at least in America, not here in, in Texas. In fact, we just got a new roof on part of our church. We've had more holes than we need. But I've never experienced that, and I kind of like to do that at least once, but I don't know if there are any churches that do that anymore. Now, we do lots of other things to remind ourselves of the, of the glory of this day. In fact, in American churches, when we didn't have holes built into our ceilings, we did have a lot of balconies. And so you might find rose petals being thrown off of balconies or streamers uh, in the church or red balloons, wonderful banners, all kinds of ways to, uh, to make the church as if it was filled with tongues of fire, that color red that uh, is for this day, Pentecost. So as we think about this, and we take a moment to to attempt to relive that day, I invite you to hear the story again. And I invite you to hear the very first words of the story. That it was on the day of Pentecost, which was a Jewish holiday celebrating the receiving of the law of God to Moses. It happened 50 days after Passover, hence the name Pentecost 50. And Luke, the writer of Acts, tells us that the disciples of Jesus were all together in one place. And and that's easy to kind of glance over that description. They were all together in one place. But we've not seen that. Even on Easter, the disciples were not all together in one place. You know, the 11 were hiding in a room, and Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and others had other places, and they came to the tomb at, at different times. And, and even in the stories after, after the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus appeared to the disciples, but they weren't all together. 
somewhere on the road to Emmaus. But now we're told in Acts that at least 120 people have gathered these disciples all together in one place. And it just reminds me of the prayer we had read in last week's service as a part of the scriptures from John. It was a prayer that Jesus prayed for his disciples in one particular line that I often remember was that Jesus prayed for us that we would be one as Jesus and God are one. Jesus prayed for our our unity, our coming together, that we would be one. And so for me here on this celebration of Pentecost, I don't gloss over that, that description, that the disciples of Jesus were all together in one place. There was this unity, and they had come together one might suppose, to celebrate Pentecost. Again, the celebration of the gift of the Word of God, the law from Moses. And as Moses came down off the mountain to to share this Word to the people, as disciples were gathered, suddenly God's Spirit descended upon them in the most unique way. And as the Spirit descended upon them, and, and they felt the power of it as if, a mighty wind was rushing in as if fire, uh, tongues of fire were landing on, on each person. Everybody was included. That's an important thing to remember in this story. It, it fell on everyone, not just the 12, but on everyone there. Tongues as of fire, the Spirit descending equally on everyone, men and women, and I imagine children, Whoever was there. And as people saw this, again, there's a lot of people in Jerusalem because it's a big feast. It's it's Pentecost. So there are the people who live there normally, and then there's the the pilgrims who have come into town to celebrate. And they're from all over. As you heard in the reading from Acts 2, all the different languages that are spoken, all the different areas around Jerusalem and the world that have come to celebrate. And with those different cultures and different groups of people and those different languages, in the midst of all of that, what we see pronounced from the Spirit is this gift of speaking, of communicating, of helping the disciples to share this good news with with others. You know, it's, it's so important that we see the first gift to the church of the Spirit is in communication. How to share the Word, how to share the story. And to do that, you need to be able to communicate so that we don't have a failure to communicate, but we have an ability to reach out. Because, you know, language... Language can be one of the things that unites us or divides us. Have you ever been somewhere when, where you're not able to speak the prominent language? You know how, how isolated you feel or, or even how fearful you are because you do not know what is being said. And you can't speak, you can't communicate. How many wars have we had in the history of our world where we really never communicated with each other? How many arguments do we have in our relationships because we do not communicate that well? Communication is vital to unity of being together. And again, by communication, I don't mean that we all believe the same thing and say the same thing. I mean that we say and we listen and we respect each other, but we understand what we're saying. Because when we don't understand what someone else is saying, we, we fill in the blanks, and we don't always get that right. I mean, in America right now, you know, politically speaking, it seems like the two major parties speak a different language and aren't able to communicate. Communication is vital. And as we hear this story of, of the disciples being able to communicate with everyone that is there, 
that those walls are, are dropped. And the effect of that, thousands, thousands join the church just because we were able to speak the same language. And many people will hear this story and they, and they think back. They think back early in the Bible to the story of Babel. And if you remember the story of Babel, it really is a story that explains why there are different languages. And in the story of Babel, people spoke one language and they were able to get together and do great things. And unfortunately, they got together and that part of humanity that might be a little arrogant decided that if we just built a tower up into the heavens, we could go up to where God lives and we could be God, like God. And so they began to build this tower. And the story goes that God, to stop them, gave them different languages. And they were not able to communicate. And then when they could not communicate, they couldn't work together. And so when they couldn't work together, they stopped building the tower. The story of Babel. And so we look at that story and we look at Pentecost and we think, wow, God is undoing that. They're being debabbled, if you will. They, they are now experiencing what it's like when you can communicate, even across languages, and how that can bring you together for a good thing. For a good thing. That's one of the keys of our desire for unity to be one, that we come together to do good things, positive things. And that is at the heart of what the church is called to be. The disciples of Jesus coming together to communicate and to share and to witness and to model the love of Christ to the world. And so, on Pentecost, we ask the question, how is the church today? How are we at communicating? How are we at bridging the gaps between us and all of the world around us? Because remember, at Pentecost, the disciples, the followers of Jesus, are together. But the manifestation of the Spirit on that day is, is a story of reaching out beyond that boundary and bringing in thousands of people. And how are we at doing that? How are we at reaching, communicating the gospel to those around us? Those Holy Spirit holes that the ancient church built, well, not ancient church, the, the church of the Middle Ages. I do like the symbolism of the idea of this opening of this invitation of God's Spirit to come into the midst of God's people. And maybe on this Pentecost and on this time where we are beginning and are very near to being back to where we were before the pandemic began, what are we as a church doing to invite God's Holy Spirit to be among us? What are we doing in our envisioning to, to help the church see how we might allow the Spirit to help us bridge the gap? to communicate with the community around us so that many can know the joy and the love of Christ. Where we're being led by the Spirit to do that. And are we opening ourselves to that? Are we inviting God's Spirit to do that? Because that is the heart of our church, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. There was a story of a, of a priest, a Franciscan priest, who was also a chaplain, and he was the chaplain of the fire department in New York. His name was Father Judge. You may or may not have heard about Father Judge, but on September 11th, when New York was attacked, Father Judge was one of the first of the fire department 
to die on that terrible day. He was beloved by the fire department before that, and of course became an inspiration to them afterwards. He was always there for them, even in death. And the story is that Father Judge had a tradition, a holy habit, if you will, of, of praying this same prayer every day. And here is the prayer attributed to Father Judge. Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet whom you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say. And keep me out of your way. And so, on this Pentecost, we pray as the church today that God will take us where we need to go, that God would have us meet whom we need to meet, that God will tell us what we need to say. And if need be, God will keep us out of God's way. Will you join me in our prayer of response? Amazing God, you call us today, just as you call the disciples on the day of Pentecost. You challenge and support us, revealing the brokenness of our communities, offering us the peace that our world needs. You point us to the pain of the cross and then remind us of the joy of the resurrection. Transform us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us breathe deeply the breath of life and change our lives forever. Amen.
let us receive the benediction. Don't be afraid. God's Holy Spirit brings us healing, comfort, and hope. We are being prepared to serve God. Rejoice. God's Holy Spirit is with us always. Amen. Oh, glory, oh.